Now I tuned into the greatest. The, the, the run, the, the Manny Wilson podcast. podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast. You know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a call. 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. Now, look, man, there's been a lot going on over the weekend sports wise. And then even more today, actually, too. And today, bro, today was a solar eclipse. But this was my first time watching it in Chicago. So... I, obviously, the last one was 2017, and I watched it in Michigan, so I had a completely different perspective of what I thought it was going to be and what it actually was. So I'm expecting it to be completely dark, like you've seen probably all over the internet and all these other places. But when I seen it here, I, I didn't even know it happened, bro. I'm, I like parked my car. I was ready to watch. I'm like, okay, it's, it's about to start getting dark any minute, <laughs> and I didn't even notice anything. I didn't have the glasses to like stare at the sun. But I was expecting to at least, you know, see some darkness around here and I ain't even see it at all. So I was I'm not going to lie to you. I was highly disappointed. I come coming from someone who's witnessed the last one in 2017 in Michigan. And I seen the complete dark skies. I was highly disappointed watching that here in Chicago. I'm not going to lie. It was a rough one. It was a rough one. <laughs> but anyway, look, bro, there's some more stuff we got to cover. Obviously, women's basketball is at the top of that list. Man, this was an incredible weekend for women's basketball. So, of course, that's what we're going to talk about. So, first things first, Iowa and UConn's Final Four game that happened on Friday was ESPN's most watched basketball game ever, including men's, women's, professional, and collegiate. Like, this was crazy. It was their most watched ever for ESPN. And then the championship game between Iowa and South Carolina that happened yesterday was the most watched basketball game ever in five years on ABC's network. So this was huge for women's basketball. And of course, that one includes the professional or collegiate as well from both men or women. So I want to give a special shout out to the women's basketball, bro. They've been slowly restoring the game that I love, bro. I, I'm loving that I'm seeing this. Uh, you see the toughness. You see them battling against each other. You see a lot of fundamentals. You see great coaching. This is all stuff that I grew up on when I, when I first started watching basketball, when I first started playing basketball. I loved watching basic fundamentals and seeing guys make the right pass, seeing guys take the right shot, create a play or, or run a play, I should say, run a play and get people open, get an easy bucket off the play. Look at all the opportunities that happen from this one play that you ran. This is the basketball that I enjoy watching. So uh, I loved what happened um, with, with, you know, the Iowa game and South Carolina, the championship. And then I also loved um, the the UConn and, and um, who, who did they play? Oh, Iowa, UConn and Iowa as well. But, you know, the South Carolina and, and USC, all of these games was dope, bro. It, it was really, really cool to me. But. Most importantly, I think this recruiting class of 2020 will probably go down as the class that changed women's basketball forever. And I know there's a lot of greats that happened and that done played the game before this core group of women's then came in and really, you know, completely dominated and, and exposed women basketball to another level. But at the same time, then they capitalize on having social media. They capitalize on being able to watch these games on a large network, being able to watch these games in a primetime slot on ABC or ESPN. Because a lot of the teams that were in the WNBA or these historic college basketball teams for women, they didn't have the platform to be able to showcase their talent. You see people talk about it now where they're saying, there used to be tournament games being ran inside of hotels, hotel gyms. The locker room was was uh, the, the, the lobby area and a restroom and stuff like, you know, this is a huge evolution for this. And, you know, I think social media has added to this. Obviously, the networks of giving these women 
a platform to showcase their talent and, and they've capitalized on it. So this recruiting class of 2020, this is huge for them, man. And, and I'm loving it here. And, and they did not disappoint when they got on the big stage and really got the chance to show everybody what they were about. I'm, I'm loving that we've seen them actually play good basketball instead of people making jokes of how bad they were or they didn't do this. They didn't do this like the men People were on the flip side of, damn, they play way better than the men's from what we see. <laughs> and, and I'm one who is in high favor of that. Like the championship game that we just watched the other day, I doubt the men's game is going to compete with that. I doubt it. Between Purdue and UConn, I don't think it's going to be up there on this level of excitement and all of that. Because going to Iowa and South Carolina, Iowa, they obviously lost the game. South Carolina won. Um, congrats to Don Staley. She won 87 to 75. And this was an amazing game all around. Um, when you look at each half that happened in the game, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, it was always a bang to end the quarter. It was always something exciting that happened. There was constant runs that was going on, constant lead changes that was putting teams in position to either stand tall or fall short. And this is what you've seen. It ultimately just came down to a defensive game. And I think South Carolina, because they played such great defense this entire game, that's what ultimately gave them the edge in terms of winning this ball game. You got to give kudos to Raven Johnson. She did her thing. You got to give kudos to Car Camila Cardosa. She was huge on the offensive glass this entire game. She was huge on the defensive glass as well, getting a lot of block shots and all of these different things. But ultimately, the thing that that really hurt Iowa was the fact that when Caitlin Clark wasn't touching the ball and she wasn't scoring, the usual suspects to help her out being Kate Martin um, and the other the other guard. I can't remember her name, not Gabby, but the other guard. She's a shooter. They weren't really knocking down shots. And ultimately, this is what kind of hurt Iowa when it came to can they pull back from this eight point deficit? Can they pull back from this 12 point deficit? It's like if Kaylin Clark isn't getting a lot of shots off, and she got some shots off, but they were highly contested. Again, Raven Johnson did a hell of a job guarding her, but you know, it's hard for Kaylin Clark to do it all on her own when she's had help all the way up to this point from her, her supporting cast. I mean, and then you got to factor in Camila Cardoso was in the paint, and that's a huge force to stop. Six, seven. Grabbing boards, good body control, got good post moves. That's hard to stop. So, you know, hey, it, it was a great game all around. You know, I, I think the better team did end up winning and that better team being South Carolina. But I love what this is doing for women's basketball. I love what it did for women's basketball. And this, this changed a lot of people's mind in terms of are these women games going to be entertaining? Because now it's going to flood over to the WNBA. You got Angel Reese going to the WNBA. Paige is going to the NBA. Kaylin Clark, obviously. You got so many stars going to the WNBA entering the draft. And now you give people something to look forward to on that main stage of the professional level for women's basketball. The only thing that needs to change now is women's basketball needs to start paying them more because these other leagues are going to try and take the talent that's supposed to go to the WNBA. That's the only thing now. Other than that, though, look, man, um, we got another topic here. It's a side note. Still in the topic of college basketball, actually, but just the flip side. So I talk about women's basketball, and I also want to take a, a brief slide, a brief step, take a step in this direction here because there's a guy in college basketball right now. He's averaging four points per game. And he's declared for the 2024 NBA draft. Now, this is LeBron James Jr., now known as Bronny James or Bronny Jr., however you want to say it. And because he entered the transfer portal prior to declaring for the NBA draft, he still has his years of eligibility. But let's be honest here. Averaging four points per game. Bronny only really showed his behind in maybe six games, but didn't even show his behind um, in terms of what he can do on the floor outside of playing defense. Because anytime he stepped on the floor, he wasn't really scoring a rock. He wasn't really controlling the offense. He wasn't really making anything happen. So, you know, to me, watching this and seeing that he's going to the NBA, I'm like, the only incentive I have is to watch Bronny James play with his dad, LeBron James, in the NBA. And if I don't want to see that, why the hell would I waste my draft pick 
picking Bronny James. This is a damn shame, bro. This is a damn shame. Bronny Jr. has no business going to the NBA. This man is not that talented to go to the NBA and really, really ball out. I know his dad hype him up. I know his dad said, oh, he's better than about 50% of the league right now. He's better than this guy. He's better than that guy. He All he needs is the platform. All he needs is the minutes to showcase his talent. And while that may be true, you know what? We still ain't seen a damn thing. So how can you expect me to side with him saying all he needs is the minutes? Because when I watched him get some minutes at USC, I didn't see him do much. I seen him make a couple sharp passes that were okay, but I didn't see him really score the rock. I didn't see him take control of the game. So what makes you think I'm going to stand behind Bronny Jr. going to the NBA? I would love to see LeBron play with his son. That's the only reason I'm like, you know, tolerating this and, and really not throwing a fit, even though this could be considered a fit. <laughs> but... I'm accepting that I want to see LeBron play with his son. I think it would be dope. I would love to play in the NBA with my dad, even though my dad's not a hooper, but <laughs> I would I would still love to do that. Like, you know, it, it's, it's a cool father-son type of thing to witness. And with Bronny going to the NBA, he might be able to help a team on the defensive aspect, but I don't think he even has the IQ yet. And I don't think outside of the athleticism, he has the skill. I haven't seen anything that proved to me that, oh, Bronny is a clutch shooter from a corner at least, or he can knock down an open shot in the corner and get his team three points whenever they need it by sitting in the corner. I haven't, I can't, I don't even picture him playing a corner man role for LeBron or any other team in the NBA right now. So, you know, with Bronny thing, Bronny going to the NBA, it's a damn good thing that LeBron James is his dad. Because outside of Bronny Jr.'s athleticism, there's not much for NBA teams to work with in terms of utilizing him in an effective way. I don't see it happening, but hey, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you seeing something I'm not. Maybe the league is seeing something I'm not. (laughs) But I know the main thing we need to see here is that LeBron James is the co-commissioner of the NBA, (laughs) the way he be running stuff. So damn it, if he want to play with his son in the NBA, it's going to happen because somebody's going to pick him up. Somebody is going to say, I want to see this as well. And if I get the first pick, I can draft Bronny and get one year of LeBron. And my ticket sales go through the roof. We get some other players and we get one shot at winning the championship. So, hey, anything can happen. Anything can happen. But look, if you heard something you agree with, you disagree with, you like, you dislike, go ahead, shoot me a call. 219-413-9405. We got some more coming up in the show as well. Some MLB news. Um, Apparently, people been getting injured left and right. And that's not good. But there is one way to stop this which we'll discuss in just a second. Um, a little bit more as well. Um, you know, the Cubs, they just <laughs> they just beat the Dodgers. We love to see that. <laughs> but anyway, look, we got some more in just a quick second. We're going to play some ads, try and uh, run up a little check. <laughs> Knowing damn well I ain't about to run up no check. <laughs> but anyway, look, man, we'll be right back. It's halftime. <laughs> All right, let's get it, man. It's news for the run starting off with college basketball. John Calipari is officially leaving University of Kentucky's basketball program. After losing to Oakland in the NCAA tournament, there were multiple speculations of whether he'd leave or stay. And as of yesterday evening, Coach Calipari has accepted a head coaching job with the University of Arkansas basketball. Huge change there. Now, as you heard by now, the South Carolina Gamecocks for women's basketball, they defeated Iowa 87-75. And this was Dawn Staley's third national championship. She won in 2017, 2022, and now 2024. The women's Gamecocks, they've only lost three games in the last three years. The past two years, they only lost one game. This is... A team that's on the verge of a dynasty. So salute to Don Staley for really, really, you know, changing this program and turning this program around, making this program, you know, put on a higher pedal stool and just bringing a lot of fame and notice to the South Carolina Gamecocks, bro, because they've been doing their thing. Now, look, we got some more stuff happening in the MLB. The Atlanta Braves, they swept the Diamondbacks in their most recent series. And the Braves, they'll now take on the New York Mets. 
The Red Sox, they beat the Angels in their series 2-1. to one. And the Astros, they had a tough matchup against the Rangers last night. And now they'll look to avoid a three-game sweep against the Rangers tonight as they play. I think it's at 7. Don't quote me on that. This is Central Standard Time, so don't quote me on that. Now, the Chicago Cubs, they had a great series against the Dodgers. We love to see it. The Cubs, they won 2-1 to one in a, th- in a, in a three-game series, and now they're going to prepare to take on the Padres. But I mentioned it last time, bro. I said, hey, don't, don't, hey, don't be surprised if I'm hyped that the Cubs win this series against the Dodgers because it's going to tell us a lot. They beat the Dodgers, and as I said before, this is something that we should kind of be excited about if you're a Cubs fan. Because this tells you where your team stands. And I know the Dodgers are going through some injuries right now. But at the same time, this is a powerhouse of a team for the Dodgers. They have so many guys on this team that put them above where people expect the Cubs to be. You look at Otani. Uh, uh, what's my guy? Man, oh my goodness. The guy, he's been on a tear, actually. He's been on a tear. The black dude, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, if you watch baseball, you know exactly who I'm talking about. But I'm having a brain fart right now. I can't, I can't think of his name right now. But they got Will Smith outside of him. Your Mamato, he's been balling. He's been doing his thing. But, you know, when they when they played the Cubs, we seen a different story here. We seen a completely different story. And our guys on the Cubs, who we think our stars, prove to be a star. Obviously, starting is pretty clear, bro. It's pretty clear. I'm going to just go ahead and wrap it up and say this right now. Imanaga, he is our guy, bro. Imanaga is, hey, man, that we are lucky to have that dude. He has been on a tear, and it's official that the Cubs, they have their star pitcher, bro. Imanaga, he is him. <laughs> it's that simple. The last game in the Dodgers series, he pitched four innings, had a long-ass rain delay, but he only allowed two singles, he struck out three, struck out three people, and he only gave up zero walks. He now has 10 scoreless innings in his first two MLB starts. This dude is for real. So I'm loving what I'm seeing from Imanaga. Cody Bellinger has been balling. Suzuki has been getting a lot of hits. And right now he's second in the league in RBIs. So, you know, with the Cubs, I said, it's something to get excited about. I know it's early on in the season, but you got to appreciate these wins, especially against talented teams and powerhouse teams because they're not easy to come by. And then ultimately, this is going to set the tone for the rest of our schedule ahead because we're about to take on the Padres and this is going to be tough. You know, you can't sleep on the Padres. You got to come. You got to come hard every game because you don't really know what's going to happen. Obviously, you know, we want to continue with the consistency, but that's been something that I've seen from the Cubs so far is the consistency. So to me, that's what has me excited about if the Cubs are actually going to do something and if they're going to continue to keep this up. The only thing I think can happen at this point, and knock on wood, as I say this, if you're by any wood, I'm going to knock on wood for you. The only thing that could possibly hurt the Cubs is injuries. That's me knocking on wood, is injuries. That's the only thing that's going to hurt them if that happens down the line of the course of this season. Otherwise, I think personnel, we're okay. We've seen, um, what, what was my guy? Defensively, we've been doing good. Nico Horner, bro, he had that sick infield catch. Oh, my gosh. It was crazy the other night against the Dodgers. Oh, no, no, no. That was, uh, I want to say it was the first game in the series or the second game in the series. But, bro, he had a sick infield catch. Um, you got to you gotta look it up if you haven't seen it by now. But, bro, he they hit the ball. Um, I, don't, I don't remember who was batting, but they hit the ball, bro, and it slid between first and second. Man, he dove, overhanded, grabbed it, then slung it to first Got my man's out, but the way he snagged the ball overhanded as the ball was rolling and bouncing, it was it was sick, man. It, it was a huge play. And, you know, hey, the defense like that, making plays like that, is what has helped the Cubs, you know, win these games and protect the lead. So, you know, outside of great batting that they've been doing from Suzuki, he's been a huge factor in our batting lineup right now. But, you know, hey, I think the Cubs, they're definitely on a good track, and I'm loving that, you know, they've been having some success right now. So, you know, again, only thing that's going to hurt them is the injuries, and I'm going to knock on wood one more time because there's been a lot of those going around in the league right now. And actually, it's been an overwhelming amount truth be told especially with pitchers so MLB they got to figure something out because you know within this past weekend you've seen four great pitchers go down in a 48 hour period 
Um, you had the Marlins, Erie Perez, the Guardians, Shane Bieber, Brave, Spencer Strider. There's been a lot of solid guys that went down in the matter of 48 hours of baseball. And then you still got multiple people who are recovering from these pitcher injuries um, that have previously occurred. Otani is one of them, Batista, Garrett Cole. Like there's so many people, and these are Cy Young winners. These are MVPs, all-stars, people who are, are bringing a lot of fans to these games to watch them play. And, you know, if you don't solve this issue of them pitchers in general getting hurt from pitching the ball, you're going to have a problem on your hand. Now, the thing that bothered me here, and let me clarify, the MLB's uh, Player Association, they blamed these injuries on um, the pitch clock. You know, they said, oh, well, the pitch clock is a big reason of why you see so many guys throwing out their arm, hurting their elbows, hurting forearms, hands, whatever the case is, whatever they're hurting, shoulder, all of the different ligaments in, you know, a person's body that they're hurting, especially when they're pitching the ball. And I'm going to tell you right now, bro, the pitch clock is not the answer. The pitch clock saying that's the reason why these guys have these injuries is just one solid excuse because we know what the real reason is. Uh, I personally haven't seen anybody um, struggle within this 15 to 18 second window frame of pitching the ball. Anytime I've watched the MLB game, most pitchers have looked fairly comfortable throwing the ball between 18 seconds. I've watched it and I'm like, okay, I don't see anyone, you know, flustered to throw the ball 15 to 18 seconds each time. So to me, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, all right, let's look at what happened in the past. Let's look at in between when these injuries start to occur and when they weren't happening as often. The main thing I think of is these substances that people use to stick on the ball and to stick on their hands to make the ball more, more, uh, to have a better grip. That's, that's what I'm seeing because I know this increases the amount of, or decreases the amount of hits because guys are throwing a little bit faster. They're throwing with a better curve. They're putting some more spin on the ball. All of those things can be looked at as a negative but you got people who are healthy as well so for the MLB they got to find some sort of middle ground in terms of you know what's good what's acceptable how much sunscreen how much spider tech can be used to prevent these injuries because when you think about this injury of of throwing a baseball when you don't have this substance on there to help you keep your grip on the ball it's it's kind of hard because you have to Squeeze the ball harder than what you're usually doing. And then when you're throwing at 110 miles per hour or or 90 miles per hour, this is insane to do. And it's going to hurt your forearm. So you look at from the wrist all the way to your elbow and you're constantly gripping a baseball as hard as you can to maintain the grip before you throw it. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Form, form up, uh, act like you're gripping a baseball for 10 seconds right now with your forearm and you're going to feel your forearm. You're going to feel some muscles in your forearm start to ache. Compared to when you don't have to grip it as tight because you have sunscreen or you got the spider attack. And I'm not saying they need to revert to that, but something has to be figured out. A common middle ground of how much you can use or whatever to prevent these injuries. Because, you know, guys have even said in the past that they they didn't really feel any type of pain pitching the ball until they stopped using these sticky substances. So bring these sticky substances back. And allow your guys to, you know, throw as fast as they can, put some extra spin on it and just moderate how much they can use, moderate how long or or whatever the case is. That's not for me to figure out, but that's for the MLB Player Association to figure out because you got to keep your guys healthy. If you don't have healthy stars, if you don't have healthy Cy Young winners, MVPs, all stars that's playing in these or, or that's playing in these particular matchups or these anticipated matchups. People aren't going to want to watch the games. They're not going to want to pay money to go sit and watch the games. And then if someone is hot, who's to say they won't hurt themselves pitching without using the substance? It may not happen immediately, but they pitch a couple weeks and, you know, pitch a couple weeks and they might start to feel it over time. So, you know, that that's my take on that, man. And I, I think they got to figure something out, find some sort of common ground to help these guys out and help these athletes out in the MLB. So other than that, man, that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm, I'm going to get you a, a positive quote or, or something to wrap up. Um, actually, one of the things I heard, and, and I'm going to go here. Um, you know, recently, this this is what kind of why I think of this too, because recently, you know, the whole this 
this been going on between Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. And I, man, I've been feeding into it. I've been loving it. I'm surprised I didn't get on here talking about it earlier earlier in the episode, <laughs> to be honest. But you, you see a lot of this stuff going on. And the most recent thing that we've seen was J. Cole responded. He dropped his dick tra- this track. And after, probably like maybe a week after, because this happened Monday or something, to yesterday, he apologized at a concert. He was like, you know, I couldn't couldn't sleep with it right. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't doing me right. Um, Kendrick is my man. It's like, you know, ain't no reason to be beef or whatever. Like, I apologize. Pretty much he was being the bigger man. And, and I look at all of this. So I'm going to say, you know, it may not always be the popular thing to do, but sometimes you got to do what sits right for you. Um, and again, I'm going to say that one more time because that was a freestyle and that sounded damn good. It may not be the popular thing to do, but sometimes you got to do what's right for you. And when I look at somebody being the bigger person of who cares what media is saying, who cares what the fans are going to think, I'm going to say whatever is going to clear my chest to make sure I can sleep well at night. I respect that, bro. So sometimes you got to do that. It may not be the popular thing, but it may be something you have to do to get that ether out your soul or to get that feeling out your soul, to get that feeling out your mind. So whatever that is, make sure you address that internally before you express that externally. Man, I am spitting today, bro. I am spitting today. (laughs) <laughs> so I, this is all freestyle too but anyway man do what you will with that information pass it on share it with a cousin a brother an uncle a niece a nephew a co-worker anyone you know um but other than that man i appreciate y'all for tuning with me we're gonna try and get you the additional episode i talked about it a little bit last week but i'm just kind of like a behind the scenes because you know i'll be running this shit like the one running it on my own um so we're gonna try and go ahead and you know get that early on in the week it'll be sometime in the middle of the week but don't be expecting a full on show this is background this is behind the scenes and it's going to be known in the title so that's going to be clarified (laughs) all right other than that man i'm out of here i will see y'all later on this week um you're going to get the pop-up episode but until then i will be back later on and so on and so on and so on